The story of Louvre Abu Dhabi is the story of, of who we are. It's about pride. It's about human excellence. It's about pushing yourself to the limit. Culture is worth it. Because we truly believe a world that is filled with culture creates a better world. When I arrived, that was a desert island. That was only sand, the sea, and the sky. Project Abu Dhabi. The Emirate pays top dollar to import some of the world's most famous names in art. The capital of the UAE is getting an entire island dedicated to the cultural assets of the future. We felt that we really wanted to create something for the world. Abu Dhabi's cultural strategy is to enlighten minds, enlighten future minds. It's focused on our future generations. Saad is just another part of that strategy. The idea of something that eventually became the Saadiyat Island Cultural District concept first started back in 2005. In those early days, I think the model was very much the Bilbao effect. People had seen what that museum had done for Bilbao, this industrial city in Spain that didn't have a huge tourist infrastructure, uh, that suddenly had an uh, international art museum that actually turned the fortunes of the city around. What happens after the Guggenheim opens in 1997 is you start to see civic leaders everywhere in the United States, in Europe, Asia, the Middle East, who want to repeat this effect. In March 2007, the agreement was finally signed. The Louvre Abu Dhabi, it is born out of a diplomatic agreement between France and United Arab Emirates, which is the first time ever in the history of museum that a museum is born out of a, of a diplomatic agreement between two nations. Celebrated French architect Jean Duvel has been commissioned to create the Abu Dhabi Louvre, a museum that will not only carry the name of one of the most prestigious institutions in the world, but which, for long periods of time, will house parts of the Louvre's rich collection. Jean Nouvel is a very special architect working in a very specific uh, situation. He never does the same thing twice. Jean Nouvel has a particularly sensitive reading of the relationship between the culture of the Middle East and the West. And I think that's probably what attracted key figures in Abu Dhabi to him. One of the first major projects that made him well known as an architect was the Arab World Institute in Paris. It was wholly modern, but it seemed to come from Arab presidents in, in a way that wasn't too literal. My name is Jean Nouvel. Every project uh, is, is like a writer. With a little poem, you can do a masterpiece. I accepted uh, immediately in 2006 and I shown the project at the beginning of 2007. I wanted to create a museum belonging uh, to this uh, civilization, belonging to this country. Abu Dhabi is a very uh, powerful city uh, with uh, a lot of uh, growth in the last years, with a strong economy and uh, like in every epoch in architecture, when a city in this situation, or a country in this situation, they built testimonies of this glory epoch. I propose to create a neighborhood of the city and not a building. My name is Nick Leach. 
I'm a feature writer with The National, and I've been writing about the Louvre Abu Dhabi since December 2012. There were stages when we arrived on site where it was really difficult to believe that this thing that we were experiencing would ever become a museum. The early phases of the work was actually all about making the basement as waterproof as possible. This is one of the early challenges of the project. This is not a simple building to build. This project has many challenges. You have difficult marine works, you have difficult finishes, you have difficult electromechanical works, you have a gigantic steel structure and difficult concrete. It is a very ambitious project and we were always racing against time. I'd never seen anything of this scale or of this complexity or anything that required so much coordination. Not only did you have 4,000 men working on the site all at the same time, you also had them working at three different levels. You had guys who were working in the basement, you had guys who were working at ground level, but you also then had guys who were effectively working in the air. It felt actually more like a, a hive or, or an anthill. I remember the day the dome was finished, and then they lifted it to put it on its final pillars and I remember that was an emotion because it means permanent. We were moving from construction to something stable and permanent. One of my favorite milestones on this project was the flooding. Allowing the sea water to surround the Louvre Abu Dhabi and making it an island. It has been stressful, it has, has been tough, but I think one thing that's very special here is the coming of together. We have all come together, you know, every single worker, every single project manager, the contractors, the subcontractors. At some point, we literally all looked ourselves in the eyes and we said, if we want this to work, we're going to be one. There are two things that interest Jean that are completely the essence of the Arab architecture, which is the geometry and the light. The design of a dome with the course of the sun is an extraordinary thing because the light changes all the time under the dome. I imagine to have different layers in the dome and one ray of light to go through. And sometimes, of course, because the projector turns, one spot disappears, but in the same time, another appears. What he's done in um, Abu Dhabi with the Louvre, you have, first of all, this remarkable dome that's not only has echoes of, obviously, the domes of the mosque, or the Mushrabiya screens and other Arab precedents, but also some of these little alleyways in a way that you know, really draws on, in a very interesting way, the history of the region. His design speaks a lot about my culture and about my heritage. Seeing that in a modern light is special. I am not here to copy the past. I am here to reinterpret the philosophy and the history of that. This building itself for me is a piece of art. It's a, it's a masterpiece and hopefully all the visitors of the museum will admire and appreciate the building on its own as much as they will appreciate the artwork. I think after so many changes in the opening date and so many delays, nobody expected the news that came out in September 2017. On the 11th of November, the doors of the Louvre Abu Dhabi will open to the world. In just two months' time, the museum was, would be opening. And the announcement of a date after all that time it actually came as a surprise. I know that all of the 
teams on the project, whether they're the construction teams or the curatorial teams or the teams who are getting the galleries finished or the, the lighting right, are actually just working round the clock now to meet that deadline. I think it's probably frantic for everybody on the project. On met pas les pattes. On va le faire avec le tonneau, mais là, il don't move. To make it ready on time is to work well with all the teams involved. We have 60 persons here working on site. Wow, with the art handler, uh, the mounting team, uh, also the team of the case that clean and prepare the case. Okay, très bien, parfait. I'm Jean-François Charnier, I'm scientific director of the Louvre Abu Dhabi. Scientific director is not a chemist or a biologist, is the head curator. It's a Japanese armor, is in preparation now. A curator is somebody who is in charge of the care and interpretation of art objects or culture objects. Perfect. We, okay. We have to find the right orientation, the right position of the painting, the right position of the object. A little bit more. Oh, I think it's okay. The idea of Universal Museum is how to gather creation from different parts of the world and to tell a story that everybody will understand. Yes, a little bit back. It's a museum that connects us together. And I think the beauty with this museum is that it will talk to everybody. And what I mean by that, anybody from all over the world, from any religion, when they enter this museum, they're definitely going to see a piece that will reflect about them. The Louvre Abu Dhabi has a lot of masterpieces. In terms of the Louvre Abu Dhabi's collection, they do have this arrangement with the Louvre where they will be getting loans, not just from the Louvre, but from 13 institutions in France. There is a loan of a work by Primaticcio, who is a Renaissance artist. In the mid-1500s, he did a commission for the palace at Fontainebleau for Francis I of France. He went there and he was hired to uh, decorate the palace. So the king sent him to Rome, to the Vatican, to look at the various objects of antiquity. There was one in particular, the Apollo of Belvedere, um, which had become very desirable. It was kind of like, I need one of those. The Apollo from Fontainebleau arrived about 10 days ago. Super happy. It's a very important piece in history and also it's a challenging piece because prior to arrival we had to weigh the artwork to transport it so then we realized that it was quite a bit heavier than what we anticipated. They're setting up the pieces of plastic right underneath it so it's easier to slide over the wood. My name is Najla Busset. I'm a registrar for the Louvre Abu Dhabi. A registrar is someone who takes care of artworks, whether it's installation, preparing artworks for restoration, transportation of artworks. To do this job correctly, you have to treat all artwork the same and not think of the value or the importance, the historical importance of the artwork because then you can make mistakes. We are trying now to put it uh, the right place and after that we will adjust the position of the opening of the arm. The, the, the bronze is very thick. There is a stress because you have to manage a lot of things in the same time and also to find the right way to install the piece. One, two, three. The feeling is important because the feeling is also the, what the experience of the visitor will, will be. Pleasure of visit and uh, discovery. I know that the whole team are working really night and day to make it perfect. Just wait now. Can you just turn it a little bit like this? They have to be very demanding. This is a curator's job to see, to check all the details. It's a question of orientation. If we 
turn him a little bit or not. Like, turn up. Yes, yes. Okay, donc just one second. More, more. Uh, stop. We'll say that the devil is in the details, but it's true. Okay, we stay like this. It has to be perfect because it's a statement of beauty, understanding and education. And it's a very strong statement of understanding, again, between East and West. Yes, it's okay. We are. Here we are. When you look at the interesting sort of history of these objects, one of the things that I think will be really interesting is how they will be displayed and the kinds of stories the museum will tell. Because each of these objects, it's interesting for the circumstances in which it finds itself as an object through the years. The question of the universality is a, a very important question. Bringing in Abu Dhabi the diversity of the world, it's very courageous to open a museum talking about the diversity and the beauty of diversity of the world today here in the region. What is important is the experience of the visitor. It's not only to tell a story, it's that the person, they live fantastic experience, they feel something strong, they meet some artwork, they understand some part of the story, they want to come back because at the end it works on them. We are today in the final weeks uh, before the opening, which is, uh, of course, a critical moment in the life of a museum. We're going. Hello, how are you? Yeah. My job is to make sure we can cross this line and that we are ready. And it's a full-time job. Salut, Louise. Ça va? My name is Manuel Rabaté and I'm the director of Louvre Abu Dhabi. Okay, guys, hold. Okay. I have an incredible team made of the best uh, uh, guys from the French system. Uh, plenty of experts we, we brought from the International uh, Museum. What is important with you is that you are uh, um, the faces of the museum. One of the goals of, of Louvre Abu Dhabi it's definitely to create a new generation of Emirati professional of museum. It's a transfer of knowledge and expertise. Can I come forward? The French really uh, have done a great contributions into te teaching us and uh, training us. They're going to pass the torch to the Emirati. We're going to encourage a new generation who are more passionate about arts and culture. Thank you. Uh, go on. Good work. We are changing the life, I hope, of people visiting, but we are also changing the life of people who will be working with us in the museum. This is the, one of the last paintings to go up on the Louvre Abu Dhabi before the opening. It's a moment that we've all been waiting for. La Belle Ferronnière is one of the few pieces by Leonardo da Vinci. Everybody knows the Mona Lisa, but the Belle Ferronnière is really one of his masterpieces. A little bit more, should I say, sexy? <laughs> said that this is a museum for the world and for the world in this part of the world especially to come and and see the genius of da Vinci and to see this beautiful woman gazing on the entire room is, uh, is, is special uh, it gives you goosebumps really a very significant moment it makes the opening 
feel very real and very close. If Louvre Abu Dhabi started out as being a story about a vision, I think the thing that struck me is quite how powerful that vision has been and how strong it's been to actually determine so many people, so many thousands of people working on this project to stick with it over the course of a decade and to actually see it realised. It took 10 years to make it real, but it was really worth it. I think it's really one of the most beautiful buildings ever built by Jean Nouvel. I think the Louvre Abu Dhabi will rank as one of his great buildings, for sure. The Louvre Abu Dhabi has a great ambition. The ambition of the building itself, you know, it will be an icon of the 21st century architecture, but also the ambition of the narrative, the ambition of the quality of the artwork. Amassing the collection that the Louvre Abu Dhabi has to this point in the amount of time that they have is remarkable. It was very lacking when I was growing up not to be able to experience such great artwork and art history while studying art history and archaeology as a bachelor's. We had to leave the country and go to museums abroad. I think the significance of the Louvre Abu Dhabi opening is huge, but to understand such a change, you need to put it in its perspective. It's part of a momentum. It's part of an integrated strategy. Tolerance acceptance, cultural connectivity. This is what the UAE is all about. The Louvre Abu Dhabi will act as a mirror to our viewpoints. And I think that's my hope and I truly believe that the Louvre Abu Dhabi will achieve that. Culture is worth it. We made sure that when we have the first visitor entering this museum, he is gonna see something of fantastic quality and he is going to feel that he has been in a place that people have given 1,010%. I think that's what's important. But what's the most important thing is culture is here to stay. The winner here is culture.